Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on implementing JWT refresh tokens. In the last video tutorial, we created the token model, token request model, and token response model class. In this video tutorial, we will create our application user class which will inherit from the identity user. We have not created any application user class which is specifically holding all user related properties that's because the identity user provides us with all the required properties like username password email and so on but in case if we wanted to add additional properties for our user like his display name type or notes for the user we would need to add them under a separate model class which will inherit from identity user and the way we do that is by first creating a model class so I click add new file call this application user and we will then hit new now for the application user we don't need any constructor we will add all the required properties but just before we add the properties we will inherit this class from identity user let's add the missing reference using Microsoft ASP.Core identity and once we have added the reference we should not see any errors now we will have access to all the properties that are stored in identity users but additionally we can create our own custom properties so let's create few custom properties that we will require in the implementation of JWT refresh tokens in the token model itself we have one property called as the user ID and we would need that as well so first thing that we want to do is go and add the properties so let's do that so these are the properties that we would need so first thing that we want to add is the notes property that we will store notes we are not creating any functionality to add notes but i have added some extra properties that we might need or uh, to teach you how to create them when you're creating an app application user class you can add n number of properties over here depending on your requirement but the only one we are concerned now is this which is a virtual property to create a list of token model so let me add the missing reference to collections so we can use the list class and now by creating this property here i can create a relation between the application user class and the token model class so here as well i need to add a virtual property so let's do that so i'm going to add the virtual property here as well it's called the user so when the table will be created there will be no column for user or for tokens inside the application user because we have specified it's virtual it will only be used to extract information between the two tables now we have to also specify that this application user property is a foreign key so let's do that so the foreign key for this relation between the application user and the token model is our user id so using the user id's value we can communicate with each of these tables and we will learn that how we do it as we proceed so first add the missing reference to foreign key attribute and it's under using system.component.model.dataAnnotations.schema. So this is how we will create a relation between two classes by adding the virtual properties and specifying the foreign key. In this case, it's going to be the user ID. You may be thinking that there is no ID over here. Then how come the relation is managed? Well, even you're inheriting from identity user as I mentioned there are already some properties that are predefined like the identity or that's the ID of the user the email the password the confirm email 
and so on. So these columns will automatically be generated plus the columns for notes typed and display name that you have specified also will be generated by entity framework core. So now let's save this. The next thing that we want to do is go to our app settings.json file and here I will change the name of my database. You can leave the name as it is but since I already have a database with the same name that exists in my server because I had used it in my previous application and I don't want to override it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the name to auth rtdb which basically means refresh token database and I'm going to save this file. For the other properties that you see, I have not changed it over here. And if you want to know how and why these properties were created, please watch the video tutorial where this entire application was created in step-by-step -step process. So the next thing that you want to do is save this file. You don't need it anymore, so you can close it. You're going to enclose your application user. And you can also close your token model. Go to the data folder and open the application DB context file. And here we need to tell Entity Framework that we need to create a new entity called as the token model. So we need to create a table for token model. We are going to create the table for application user automatically because it is inheriting from identity user. But whereas for our token model, we need to inform Entity Framework that it creates an entity data sets or DB set for us. So to do that, first thing that we want to do is add the property over here for our DB set. So public DB set for token model. And we are going to call this table as tokens because it's going to store all refresh tokens. And it's getter and setter. So now we can save this and we can close our application DB context file. Next thing you want to do is right click and build your project. So the build was successful. Now right click on your project again and go to tools and open the project in terminal so you will directly be seeded or changed directory into your application project folder. Now what you want to do is type the following command to create your migrations. When we started working on this application for implementing refresh tokens, we deleted the migrations folder in the first video. That's because we wanted to create it from scratch because we wanted to add few new tables and modify the identity user. And that was one of the main reasons that we did not continue coding the previous application or the previous tutorial. We created a new video series for this. So if somebody doesn't want to implement JWT token, they can keep the structure intact. If somebody wants to implement refresh JWT token, they can change the structure like this. So the command to create migration is .NET. Entity Framework, Migrations, Migrations, Add, and we will give a Migrations a name. Since it's my first migration, I'll call it Initial Create, and I'm going to hit Enter. So Entity Framework Core will now create the Migrations folder for me, as you see here. This Migration folder will have the Initial Create file which will contain the code to create all the required table and columns. And then what we want to do is update our database. Unless we update the run the update command, the database will not be created. So if I had to just refresh this, you will see there is no database at the moment because we have not yet updated the run the update command to create to run these queries. So what we are going to do is .NET Entity Framework Database Update and 
what we want to update is the initial run the initial create queries inside the initial create file so here inside the up method all the queries will be run as soon as we hit enter so now we hit enter and entity framework core is creating all the required tables and columns based on the query over here so as you see it's completed and we get it's done no errors so let's check in our database in our server if we have the database using azure data studio we can just refresh the database and as you see when i hit refresh we see the auth rtdb created which was the name of the database that we had provided in the app settings file now we have our database created now if we go to tables we will have the tokens table which will contain all the properties for token in the form of columns the user id we will have the asp net users table if we edit it we should have the extra columns that we created for notes type in for display name although we are not going to use this but we will leave this intact so now what we want to do is go ahead and code the controller that is required to manage or to issue JWT tokens so we will do that in the next video tutorial please like and subscribe my channel tech howdy if you have any questions you can always use the comment section i will also post the link for the dev ops repo for this project thank you